Welcome to another tutorial. Today we're just going to be having a look at a sign up form. Now this is an expansion on the login form that we've done previously uh, to get ourselves a login detail for the database. So now we're just going to be jumping back a bit and taking a look at the sign up page. So here we go. Here's our user that we got in previously. So we're looking to add additional users. So with the sign up page, let's just close down what we did previously, adding the user in manually. And then we're going to need a, a full name to match the sign up details. And we'll just make that Varkar45. We can apply that. No, I don't think that'll make any difference to what's happened sort of in the table, so that'll be fine. So the next thing we'll look at is the actual register page again. Now this is just a bootstrap HTML page that I found on the internet somewhere. And we're just going to start in adding in the PHP at the top. Now the code that you need is if asset. Now what the asset does is uh, it checks to see if the uh, if the post button sign up has been pressed. So uh, it's like an activation, a shortcut for an activation if the activation has happened. So here's where the button actually gets pressed. Just going to change that to sign up button to match what we have at the top. And then here with the form, we need to have method as post. And then action is just blank with quotes. So that way with uh, the form method, once it's been activated, it stays on the same page. Now I'm just going to be adding the name to each of these so we can capture them later on. This allows us to get them in the post variable, post super global variable. Once we have everything ready for the super global variables, we can start to set them up in the top part so that once the sign up button 
has been validated we can come back up and uh, validate the global variables So we're just typing in each of the inputs that we put in. So that's full name, email and password. We need password two as well. Now we're going to just paste in the validation for the email. This is an automatic PHP filter code that you can use to validate your email. And then we're just going to validate that both the passwords match. And then we're going to check that the full name that we're using is less than 45 characters. And just so it's easy, we'll just make sure that uh, it's greater than 5 for us to test with. We're just going to remove the example prefix. See how it's got example. We're just going to remove that from the super global variables at the top and in the bottom as well. So before we submit the form, we're just going to add in what we're missing. Let's get that field correct there, the name valid field. Let's make sure the password length is correct as well. So if it's greater than let's say three just for testing purposes now we'll just paste in the database connection details <coughs> That means that if all the conditions are true, or all the conditions pass and that's true, then we'll connect to the database. So the query that we want to query is the email from the database to check if uh, the actual email is in the database. 
because if it's in the database when they sign up that's going to be a problem so we need to check for that too so we're going to check the database and if the result is empty for the variable that's going to be assigned So this is just setting up so that the if the result in num rows or number of rows are greater than zero so there we go if the user is not equal to empty and uh, the resulting rows are not greater than zero or the resulting rows are greater than zero then the user must exist Just going to put another <coughs> else statement in. And just to clarify what it does is user doesn't exist and can be added to the database so we'll need the hash of the database that's stored in the password so you need to create a hash for the password and that's the code how to do that You'll also need to store the user details in the database. And that's the query to do that. Now we're just going to have a look at the queries file and as you can see there's the queries to return email from database and return password from database. And we're just going to insert this query which is insert user details. So just to insert the email, the full name and the password. And if you don't, if you have a problem and your column name is red like it is here, then it's obviously not matching up. So we change the email address and still uh, the column for full name doesn't match up, but that's definitely the correct one. And usually the problem is that you haven't reloaded the database schema back in with that button there. So that's it all working now. So we don't really need to reorder these, but I like to have them in order. So we'll just put them in order.
So there we go, we'll just test uh, test the sign up page and see how far we've got. and nothing's appeared in the database so we'll just troubleshoot that and figure out why that is so that part of the query was wrong and wasn't going to work And also the eagle-eyed among you would have spotted that had username there instead of full name, so that's fixed now. So we'll just try again. Nothing's worked that time, I don't think. Let's have a look. So we'll keep troubleshooting. We'll check the query again. So it would be helpful if we had the includes to actually include the database in the queries file. And remember, it has to be forward slash. So I think the problem we were getting before was we had the full name was over five characters so let's try again with just three characters so there we have a SQL error so at least something's went right then so it must have been the the length of the username or the full name so let's take a look at mysql workbench and it's because we've got password is only 45 we have to have it as 255 to support the hash 
sulla nebula Then we can test again. So there we go, there's our echo statement that we've reached the user. And there you can see the users in the database with the hash password. So that's everything for this tutorial. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to include the session start and the error check-in if you want to make any error problems. And you can also uh, put a forward in header in there to let's see to forward the user to a, a dashboard as you can see for example here so there we go we can see that everything is working okay hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you enjoyed it Thanks, bye-bye.